Well, hello there. It's good to see you again. Um, I wanted to bring to you an idea about what the true danger of apostasy is based on a, a close reading of a part of Hebrews chapter 6. Now, um, just for background information, a lot of people believe that the true danger of apostasy is that if you turn away from Christ, um, then you, that is it. It's the end of the line for you because you're not allowed to come back. Now, what I'm going to outline is that I believe the true danger of apostasy is that there is no other salvation outside of Christ. Not that God is capricious and vengeful insofar as if you turn from him, he'll never let you come back. Um, part of the problem is a, a certain kind of reading from Hebrews chapter 6. So I'm going to share, you, I'm going to share some slides with you. Um, here we see the true danger of apostasy. Now, what I'd like to outline is... Um, there's a little bit of a nuance here, but I'm going to take you to Hebrews chapter 6. Nothing against NIV, but I'm going to compare it and contrast it with a reading from the ESV. I'm going to start in Hebrews 6 verse 4. So it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance, to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public grace. Okay, I mean clearly, if you just take, it is impossible for those, all the things there, and then you go to verse 6, who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. Now, as a native English speaker, that sounds exactly like a, a categorical uh, statement that if you fall away, you can't be brought back to repentance, meaning... By definition, if you turn from Christ, that's it for you, you're done. And that is, <laughs> it forms the basis of a great deal of fear in the hearts of a great deal of people who have stumbled in a significant way, faltered in their faith, and want to come back, and they're not sure if the Lord is going to um, offer open arms to them as they come back. Let's read the same passage in the ESV, and then I'm going to talk about why they read a little differently. Uh, for it is impossible, we're in verse 4, in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away, to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. You may not have noticed a very big difference here, but in the ESV, the, the verb to bring to repentance is in the active voice. So it's impossible to restore them again to repentance is active voice. NIV translates it passive voice, to be brought back to repentance. Be brought back is passive. To bring to repentance or to restore them again to repentance is active voice. Now you may think, Matt, why does it matter if one's active and another's passive? Isn't this some sort of um, nerd word game? And I would say, no, not necessarily. When you think about it, <laughs> being cooked or cooking is a significant difference. Would you rather cook or be cooked? Would you rather kill or be killed? In my opinion, uh, there's a very big difference between these concepts. Now, the, def the definition of the word is the same, but the concept and how it affects you is significantly different if, if it's an active uh, voice or passive voice. Okay, now what I want to show you is that the ESV, in my opinion, translates the verb to bring to repentance properly by making it active voice. Now, anakainid zain, anakainid zain, is in the active voice. If you know um, a, at least a little bit of Koine Greek, you can tell right away just by the way it's spelled that it's an active voice. Now, one of my uh, professors in seminary Made, made sort of a, a big deal about the, the active voice here of this verb in Hebrews 6.6. 6. Um, basically, what he's saying is this. To bring someone to repentance, or to be brought to repentance, the definition of the words are similar, but the concept actually is completely different. Um, so, to, to bring somebody to repentance as a third party is to offer life to them, to offer them the chance to repent, and um, to, to be an agent of their repentance as a third party. To be brought to repentance in a passive voice in English conveys the idea that it's possible or not possible to repent categorically. What would be the big deal between translating it active or passive? If it's active, 
you're a third party. You're trying to offer the person the following things. Enlightenment, tasting of the heavenly gift, a share of the Holy Spirit, tasting of the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the age to come. And they're saying, nope, I've tried all these things. I don't want them. What else are you going to offer them? So the, the, the culmination of the worship and religion of Israel is Christ. And you're offering them the, the fulfillment and the fullness of the revelation that you can find in the Torah, the writings, the prophets. And they're saying, no, actually, I've tasted all, I've, I've, I've had the enlightenment. I've tasted the heavenly gift. I've had a share in the Holy Spirit. I've tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and I still don't want it. Basically, what the author would be saying is, what else are you going to offer them? Free coffee? Um, five bucks? A, a firm handshake and a good look in the eye? You have nothing left to offer them. You have no more ammunition, and um, what else do you have except offering the very thing that they are rejecting? Now, if it's translated in a passive voice, then let me go back to the NIV here. In a passive voice, Basically, it's saying, categorically, it's not possible for them to repent at all. If they've tasted it and they don't want it, they can't repent. Do you see how there's conceptually a huge difference here? On the one hand, if you apostatize, if you turn away from Christ, someone's going to try to offer you the very things you're rejecting. They are not going to be able to persuade you because all they're offering is the very stuff you already know and you're rejecting it. On the other hand, if you, are, if you turn away from Christ, by some divine decree or edict, it's now impossible for you to repent. Do you see that there's actually a huge world of a difference in the active or passive voice translation of this text? Now, here's one other thing. Let me go back here. In Hebrews chapter 10, oh, I forgot the chapter. That's okay. Chapter 10, verse 28, anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. The first thing I'd like to say is that a lot of, I, I, I'm imagining that we read Hebrews 10 in light of how we understand Hebrews 6. So it's the same thing. If they have set aside and trampled underfoot the Son of God, what else can you do for them? All that's left for them is punishment. It's not saying because they've trampled um, underfoot the Son of God, now they categorically are unable to repent. What the, what the author of Hebrews is saying is, this is their offer of salvation. This is their access to life. If they trample this, the only thing they have left is to be destroyed. Now, uh, what I want to do now is just offer you an encouragement based on these findings. Look, I may not be right, but I'm pretty sure that there's a point to be made here. If you are in your heart ready to repent and turn back to God, but deep down you think he doesn't want to accept you, deep down you think, no, I'm not able to repent because categorically, I read it in the, in the, the NIV translation of Hebrews 6, you know, I turned away, now I can't come back. There's some, I, what I want to do is offer you hope that that's not necessarily how you have to read that passage. Besides, if you read that active voice and you understand that the person trying to bring you to repentance has run out of tools, but it does not necessarily mean that you are unable to repent, now we can actually make more sense of Scripture. Because the same God who told uh, us that his arms are outstretched, right? We see St. Stephen's, uh, the first martyr's speech in Acts. The Holy Spirit's always extending his hand, right? We hear Jesus telling the parable of the prodigal son. We see Jesus reinstate Peter after he denies him three times. Um, the fact that you can repent, but that your friends won't be able to offer you anything if you already know it all and you reject it, that's, that makes a lot more sense of the God we see in the Bible, who is super merciful. He's not capricious. He wants to forgive you. He wants you to come back to him. Why would we believe when Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Why do we think God wants to forgive unbelievers, but he doesn't want to forgive believers? Look, if you do want to turn back to God and you have apostatized, he is so willing to accept you. His arms are open wide. There's no um, 
secret rule book in heaven where now you're not allowed to repent. You are allowed to repent. And I want to offer that to you. And it's free of charge to you, paid for you by the very one that you accepted. And then you joined back in the ranks of those who crucified him. But he is super merciful and loving. And you have a chance today. Why not repent today? It is available to you. There's no category there's no categorical, reject, categorical rejection of you by some definition or some rule book out there. Um, God, in his mercy, does want to let you repent, and I, I encourage you to do that. I hope this is helpful to you. Um, leave a comment below if you have a question. You can make a response video. Otherwise, I appreciate your time. Thank you.